So welcome back to the seventh edition of the RCA Training Tip Show, where every Wednesday Aussie time, I'm gonna be your YouTube road cycling coach and host of the show, Cam Nichols. Now, if you're a channel supporter or a subscriber to the RCA Training Tip Show, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing it below. You'll know that from time to time in between road cycling training tips, I like to do a gear review. And this review today is based off requests from you. I've had a number of people over the last few months pose me this question. Hey Cam, can you please review the speed play pedals you use on that giant TCR and also your BMC team machine? Now, as I originally used Shimano pedals when I first got into road cycling about 11 years ago, and as I've attempted to go back to Shimano on two occasions over the years, including within the last few months, I thought it would make sense to do a comparison video between Speedplay, who were purchased by Wahoo actually late last year, and Shimano pedals. While I personally use Speedplay on my road bikes and plan to use them for the rest of my cycling journey, my goal in this video is to not try and tell you why you should buy Speedplay or why I think Speedplay are better. My goal in this video is to give you a general overview and understanding of each pedal system, the pros and cons of each, but I will conclude with why I think Speedplay pedals best suit my needs as a bike rider. In addition to my views in this video today, I will also share an expert's opinion on the topic of Speedplay versus Shimano pedal, sharing with you an interview I did with a well-regarded Australian bike fitter based out of Brisbane, Australia, who has been fitting road cyclists for 10 years and prior to bike fitting has worked as a sports physiotherapist for a number of years. So in this video today, we're gonna to break it into four main parts. Number one, we're gonna talk about the price and weight of each system. In this section, we'll be weighing both pedals and the shoes to understand the weight impact of the cleats. Number two, the general design and practicality of each pedal system. Number three, the pros and cons of each system. And number four, my experiences with each system and why I personally choose Speedplay. But before we get into these four main items, if you're a road cyclist out there looking to take your performance to the next level, don't forget I've got a free ebook and free online training for road cyclists looking to go next level, which I'll link to below. So number one, let's talk about the price and weight. So each brand has multiple pedal systems, but the three most commonly used appear to be from Shimano, we have the Durace, the Ultegra, and the Shimano 105. And from Speedplay, we have the Zero Chrome Molly, the Stainless Steel, and the Titanium. Now, the two that we're going to weigh and price compare here are the two I have in front of me, which are the mid-range pedals. That's the Shimano Ultegra PDR8000 and the Speedplay Zero Stainless Steel Black Pedals. Now it's hard to find the exact recommended retail of each pedal system because it doesn't appear to be listed on the Shimano website. However, looking online here in Australia, you can get the Speedplay Stainless Steel Pedals for 240 AUD and the Ultegra Pedals for 191 AUD. And across the board, the Speedplay Pedals appear to be slightly more expensive expensive than the Shimano's. In regards to weight, the actual pedal for the Speedplay stainless steel was 105 grams versus the Ultegra at 124 grams. So a combined weight saving on the Speedplay pedals alone of 38 grams. However, when we bring the cleats and the associated attachments into the picture, things drastically change. The shoe weight on the Speedplay is 38 grams heavier than the Shimano's coming to a total difference of 76 grams in shoes, meaning we have a total weight difference of 38 grams going in favor of the Shimano pedals. However, if you remove the walkable aero cleat covers from Speedplay, we can bring that difference down to 16 grams. However, I would not recommend removing these cleat covers because you'll damage the cleats and you'll walk around very awkwardly. So while Speedplay promote their pedals as being a lighter proposition, don't be fooled if we combine both the pedal and the overall system, the speed plays appear to be heavier than the Shimano's. Number two, the design and practicality of each system. From a design perspective, the speed play kind of look like lollipops. They're smaller with a circular shape and have a longer axle to accommodate a smaller pedal circumference size. 
In comparison to the Shimano pedals, which take on more of a hexagon look, from a sizing perspective, they're almost double the width, creating a more stable platform, which we'll talk more about shortly. So in regards to tension release, this is my wife's shoe now, which is essentially the amount of ease or pressure you can put into the pedal system for when clipping in or out. On the Shimano pedals, you have the option to change the tension using this bolt feature here. In order to change the actual float or range of movement you have when pedaling, you actually need to change the cleats with Shimano pedals. The red cleat does not allow any float, the blue cleat allows two degrees of float, and the yellow cleat enables six degrees of float. Speedplay, on the other hand, they do not offer a tension release system. However, they do offer an incredible option for float without having to change the cleat system. You actually have up to 15 degrees as an option of float range using these inward and outward hill limit screws that enable you to adjust float without changing the cleats over. You can even have a fixed float riding position by tightening both screws to their limits. Now is that option of float actually a good thing? Let's hear what bike fitting expert Neil had to say about that. They're more adjustable. They've got more ability to go back and sideways and adjustable float. Is that a bad thing? It can give you too many options to think about. Yeah. Yeah, it's great with, for me. my left leg was floating around a lot in the pedal and it enabled me to do that, are you better off locking it in or would you rather let the oh. natural movement happen? It depends on the rider. It's okay. one of those, in, in, for some people, locking the foot in is, is a necessity because it's the only way they can function. Yep. In your case, using the speed plays with more float allowed your knee to not hurt. Yes. But the reason your knee was hurting and, and your foot was squirreling on the pedal in the first place was because of a right-sided leg length difference. Yes. So you would be fine with Shimano pedals or looks or whatever now, assuming we used a six millimeter shim. Shim, yeah. yeah okay. Which we can do. One of the other promoted features that Speedplay go on about is the dual-sided entry. So I can enter on that side of the pedal and also on that side simply by pushing down. Shimano, on the other hand, is obviously one-sided, and to enter, it's a slightly more technical. You don't push down, you actually have to come in from the side and clip in. Now, once you're into the pedal, it should be noted that the stack height is actually different on speed plays than Shimano's. According to the Speedplay website, which I hope Wahoo decide to revamp because it's looking a little 1990s, the stack height difference is roughly two millimeter lower than the Shimano pedal, which means your foot is actually closer to the pedal for better power transfer, according to Speedplay, which also means you'll need to drop your saddle height on Speedplay ever so slightly. Lastly, the Speedplay pedal system, the way it connects, is said to reduce aerodynamic drag and also offer more clearance for when pedaling around corners. Ideal for criterium junkies that like to take a risk or two. Now combining these characteristics into practicality and the way they're implemented and used by a bike fitting expert, let's hear what Neil had to say. Speed play, double sided entry, um, a much more forgiving entry because you don't have to flip the pedal over so you just stand on it and it goes in. They take a bit of wearing in, so they have a downside. When they're new, they're really stiff. After 50 clip in and out cycles, they become a lot easier. So some people don't like that. So the speed plays require a little bit more maintenance. Yes. You've got to keep them clean. You've got to lubricate them a bit and that kind of stuff. But if you've got some mechanical aptitude and you don't mind doing that, they're a really good pedal system. Yep. I use them a lot for weird and wonderful cases because they're more adjustable. Um, there's more you can do with them in terms of cleat placement for and aft with the, the base plate extenders, but there is nothing inherently terribly wrong with any of the three bolt systems. And what about Shimano? Less maintenance. Um, yeah. They can get dirtier and it doesn't matter. Shimano, any of the three bolt systems, they wear out by walking on them rather than clipping in and out, whereas these wear out from riding and clipping in and out as opposed right. to walking on them. Interesting. So you don't want to be, if you don't walk on your Shimano cleats, they last you forever. Number three, the pros and cons of each system. So now understanding the practicality and design of each system, let's put a list of pros and cons together, starting with the pros. With Speedplay Pros, it's easy to clip in, it's easy to adjust the flow, it's a more aerodynamic system, you're closer to the pedal for greater power transfer, apparently, and there's more clearance for pedaling around corners. The Shimano Pros, they're more cost effective, easier to maintain, you have the ability to adjust tension for clipping in and out, it's a more stable pedaling platform due to the larger pedal circumference, and it's a more mainstream pedal for purchasing and repair needs. Speed play cons, it's more expensive, 
There's more maintenance required. The range of float can potentially accommodate bad habits for poor bike fitting, and it's an unstable platform if cleats are not maintained and replaced often. The Shimano cons, adjusting float requires different cleats, and the plastic cleats can become worn from walking over time. And here's an example of my wife's cleats. She uses Shimano. You can see on that side, it is a lot more worn than the other side and probably that needs to be replaced. So if you've got experiences with either pedal system, you've got anything to add to the list, I'd be keen to get your thoughts below. Number four, why I personally choose Speedplay. So it would have been maybe end of 2010, the start of 2011, I was at my local bike shop in Melbourne at the time, it was total rush and Speedplay had become all the rage. Maybe it was because Fabian Cancellara had just won Paris-Roubaix for the second time and in the year of 2010, he achieved the Flanders-Roubaix double on speed plays. Now, I was complaining to one of the store associates at Total Rush about some knee troubles I was having. So he said, why don't you try speed play? They're great for knee issues and also they're used by world champions and pro cyclists such as Fabian Cancellara. So, now my knee troubles actually went away and I became a speed play man until Mid-2016, I decided to go see a bike fitting expert in Melbourne, Australia, and he said to me, why are you on speed play? You should be on Shimano because the platform is more stable and there's more power transfer due to the size of the pedal system. The exact same thing happened with another bike fitter only a few months ago here on the Sunshine Coast, and on both occasions, I went back to Shimano's for about a week or two each time. Now, as soon as I was on the Shimano pedals, I wanted to go back to speed play immediately. Why? For me, it's not actually the float as I once thought it might be, nor is it the aerodynamics or the pedaling through risky corners or the weight of the pedal or any of that. For me, I genuinely feel that the power transfer from the shoe to the pedal into the bike with speed play when seated is superior. However, out of the saddle, because of the size of the pedal and because you can be better connected with the tension into the pedal, I feel like if I was a sprinter getting out of the saddle, or if I liked punching it up a climb getting out of the saddle, so accelerating really rapidly out of the saddle and putting pressure through the pedals, then I feel like the Shimano's are a better pedal system for that type of rider. But for me, I don't typically do those things. Very rarely do I get out of the saddle and sprint unless I'm trying to close a gap in a criterium. And when I'm climbing, I tend to say seated. So I am predominantly a seated rider. And because of that, I think the speed play pedals are better for me because as soon as I start to put pressure onto the pedal system when seated, I feel like there is a better connection between my foot and the pedal, and that is going directly into the bike. I'll be keen to get your thoughts below and I'll catch you all in the next video.